Hey everybody, this is Gregory from DAP University. So in this video, we're talking about how to write Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. We're talking about how to do math today in Solidity and also how to use libraries. So before we do that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. It really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build blockchain technology. I'm gonna be talking about two different topics in this video that are somewhat related. The first topic is uh, libraries, how to use them in Solidity. And the second topic is math, you know, how to do math in the Solidity programming language. And these are somewhat related because, you know, we use libraries to uh, manage math functions all the time in Solidity. Um, and it's a really common use case. So I figured I would just record both of those in the same video. So, you know, what is a library if you're not familiar? You know, library is basically a way uh, to organize code that can be reused uh, in multiple places inside your project. So that's one of the main reasons we use libraries, essentially to dry code up. So if you're not familiar with dry, D-R-Y, um, that's an acronym for don't repeat yourself, right? So basically, if we have a function that we want to use in multiple smart contracts, we could define it inside of a library and then use that library to use that function. And that way, if that function ever changes, the change is absorbed by any place that we use it. So how do we declare a library in Solidity? Well, like this. First, we use the uh, library keyword, say library. And I'm going to call this library just math. Okay. Okay. So in the earlier videos, you know, I said that, you know, smart contracts um, are the main way that we organize code inside of Solidity. Um, you know, it's called a contract-oriented language, and that's true. But we also have libraries where we can, you know, define functions inside of here and store variables and things like that. Um, and that's another way to organize code inside Solidity. But really, at the end of the day, a library belongs, you know, inside of the smart contract so it can get called and used. Um, you know, libraries don't have the full behavior of a smart contract. Um, they don't really have storage in and of themselves. They don't, um, you know, you can't inherit from a library, things like that. So it's not really like a smart contract. At the end of the day, it's meant to be used inside of a smart contract. So we can define a function inside a library like this. I'm going to create my own divide function, say function uh, divide. All right. I'll just leave this here for a second. So why would we want to use a divide function? Well, I'll show you. Let's create an example inside of my contract where we would, you know, basically just do some math. First of all, we'll declare a value. We'll say uint 256. We'll say public value. We'll just store the value here. And now I'll actually store this value, uh, but we'll, we'll uh, compute it. So we'll say function, uh, I'll say calculate. And we'll take a value, we'll say you int, we'll say value one, we'll say you int value two, we'll say public. And inside of here, we'll basically just set the value to whatever the calculated value is. We'll say uh, value one divided by value two. Now this is a basic way to do division inside of Solidity. We just use this operator here. It's the division operator. So why might we want to use a library for this? Well, you might notice a problem. It's value two. What if value two is zero, right? There'd be a problem with this. We get some sort of uh, exception because you know we can't divide by zero. And that's a really common use case for a library. Basically, we can write some code inside of here that prevents this divide by zero error, and we can actually uh, stop the function before that happens. So basically, we could do like this. We could uh, define this function and say divide is equal to you know, the input. Let's say you int 256, let's just say A, you int 256, B. We'll say internal, pure, turns, you int 256, and we'll do the division inside of here. So say require that b is greater than zero. That's the first thing we'll do. We'll take the denominator and make sure the denominator is greater than zero so that we don't divide by zero. Then we'll actually uh, create a return value of c, which is c divided by b, or the numerator divided by the denominator. 
And we'll just return that value. Return C. Sorry, this is supposed to be A. So now we can actually use this divide instead of this divide here as a safer way to do division inside of Solidity. That's a really common use case for a library. So how do we do that? How do we take this function out of this library and uh, use it inside this calculate function like this? Well, we can say uh, math dot divide and then just pass in value one and value two. And we store the output to value just like that. All right, now I'll erase this. All right, now let's try to run this code. So whenever we deploy this, I'm going to select my contract instead of math. And whenever this is compiled and deployed, um, it knows that my contract depends upon math. So it's already going to get compiled and deployed automatically. We don't have to deploy this first and then this. This And the whole compilation process of this file, um, the math library, at least the part that gets used, is going to get compiled because it's dependent upon right here. So let's try this. First, we can see the value is 0. And we'll say value 1 is, uh, say, 100. And value 2 is 10. All right. OK, that was successful. We see the value is 10. Now what happens if we try to divide by 0, calculate, and we get an error, just as we expect. You know, we can also do some other values just to make sure it works. Say 144 divided by 12 should also be 12. Yep. All right. So that's how you, uh, you know, that's a basic example of how you import a math uh, function from a library. Now, there are a few other ways we can do this. You know, instead of having this uh, library just at the top of a file here, we can actually move it to another file and import it inside of this file. So we can clean this up and we're only looking at one, you know, sort of unit at a time. We don't have to look at the smart contract. We don't have to look at this library. So I'll show you how to do that. We'll go over here to our browser and we'll create a new file. We'll call this math. So well. All right. Now we'll just copy the math library from here. We'll actually just uh, copy it with the Solidity programming language declaration. And we'll paste it in here. Save. Now we can require the file uh, just like this. We say uh, import. We use uh, double quotes, math, so well. All right, and notice I use the dot to indicate the current directory, forward slash, then the file name, which is math.sol, followed by a semicolon. All right, that'll do the same thing. So we can go back to here and deploy this. Say math, sorry, go to my contract and deploy. And we'll see, say 188 and 9. All right, there we go. That's doing integer division. That's why it uh, has no remainder. OK. So that's how you import a library from another file in Solidity. Now I'll show you one more thing. I want to introduce you to a really common library, which is called SafeMath, which is put out by Open Zeppelin. Um, you can go to that repository here if you want to read more about it. But basically, it implements a lot of uh, helpful functions that I use a lot when developing smart contracts and doing math. They've, you know, um, they, they, they've solved a lot of problems like guarding from overflow and things like that. Um, and so I use this library a lot. So it's a really common use case for me. And I'm going to show you how to use that library inside of here because it, it works a little bit differently than how we implemented our math library. So I'm going to delete this file and create a new one, say uh, safe math. And I'm just going to copy the code here from GitHub, click edit, and go, oh, sorry, not edit. I want to do raw. I'm just going to copy all that. Go back to Remix and paste this in here. All right. Now let's actually change the Solidity programming language version. So 0.5.1. I think it should probably be up to date. Oops. Yep, looks good. All right. So let's save that. Go back to my contract. Instead of importing math, we'll do uh, safe math. 
all right? And instead of, you know, calling a library like this, we're gonna do a different way, all right? And this is pretty cool. So we can take all these functions in here, like multiply and divide and subtract and add. We can actually call them on unsigned integers directly, all right? And we do that like this. We can say using safe math for uint 256, all right? Now that's pretty cool. I'll show you what that does. Instead of doing this, we can basically say uh, value one, div, value two. There you go. That's pretty slick. So let's try that. Uh, go to my contract with deploy. Click this. So you value uh, one, it'll be 144. And value two is 12. All right, the value is 12. There we go. Say 133. 33 divided by 11. Yep. 100 divided by 10. There we go. Awesome. All right, guys. So that's all I got for today. I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you want to see more videos about how to build smart contracts, the Solidity programming language, feel free to leave a comment down in the comment section below. And if there's anything else that I missed or you want to know more about, be sure to leave a comment. And also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And click the like button because that really helps these videos get found so that more people can learn how to build Ethereum smart contracts with the Solidity programming language. Again, I hope you all like this video. And until next time, thanks for watching DAP University.